So what do we do to engage a reader with discovery? You have to get your reader to be part of the process with you. So you need to be an observer of places, objects and people. Imagine if you're traveling on the bus to school or you just happen to be down the street or you're on a train. Most of the time we're stuck with our iPods in our ears or we're surfing, looking at our phone on Facebook. We never see the people around us. Just imagine for that one moment that you suddenly notice the little old lady in the corner of the train who's got her tr little trolley with all her newspaper and her food in it and that. You notice how her shoulders are hunched over and you notice how tired she looks. To the left you see a businessman in his suit, but you don't just see, and most students just say, there was a blonde man with blue eyes in a suit. What does that tell us? What if instead you said that you noticed that he looked at his phone nervously, that he kept flicking across the screen? that he adjusted his tie and every time the train went in the tunnel he actually saw his reflection flicked his hair back as it went through the tunnel. Start to see people and places. Start to zoom in and look at what's around you and you will paint, become what is called painterly. You'll paint the settings, see the sensual details, make your characters original, authentic, listen to people's voices. The worst thing I read is dialogue. Really badly done. Actually listen to the sound of your family's voices and your friends and you'll see it's very different to what most students write. The minute, the minute of life, that's the little minute details, those little ordinary things that we take for granted. They're the most fascinating. It could be a grandfather's antique compass, his polished brass casing is dinted with age. It could be a button in a coat pocket that you found from the past. Think about all of those little things in your own life. In your own room, do you have something that is you? Something from your childhood? Is it the teddy bear that sits on the shelf with the missing arm and the missing glass eye? The story there is more behind why it's missing rather than the teddy bear that's sitting on your shelf. So think about all those things in your life that could do discovery. Roger McGow has a beautiful poem called Smithereens. And I'm actually going to read it in whole because I think it's so important to think about writing. I spend my days collecting smithereens. I find them on buses, in department stores, and on busy pavements. At restaurant tables, I pick up leftovers of polite conversation. At railway stations, the tearful debris of parting lovers. I pocket my eavesdroppings and store them away. I make things out of them, nice things sometimes. Sometimes odd like this. Life is about the, the minute, those little details. That's what makes a great writer, they truly see. The other thing about being a great writer is through reading. You might actually borrow amazing verbs. You might find a fabulous image. Picasso said you've got to learn um, not to copy but to steal. To actually find that word and you think, wow, I love that verb. I can actually use that in my writing. And Julian Barnes, who's such a beautiful writer, great related text, by the way, for discovery. Reading and life are not separate but symbiotic. And for this serious task of imaginative discovery and self-discovery, there is and remains one perfect symbol, the printed book. It is through dipping into great poems, through dipping into extracts and great writing, that you will become a writer yourself and you will develop artistry. So just a, a few of my favourite. I'm just going to touch on these. Favelle Paré, Past the Shallows, is an Australian author. This is her first novel. She has the most stunningly beautiful moments in this text that will teach you how to write well. Go on Google and put let the great world spin into Google Colin McCann and you will find a PDF of the novel unfortunately for the writer but your, the opening of that novel will take you into Bronx. It'll take you into the world of how to use verbs beautifully in your writing and not die from adjectivus. This magnificent desolation Thomas O'Malley another Irish writer he writes about a young boy watching the landing on the moon and his mother has left him in an orphanage in Ireland and it's just stunning. Tim Winton, yes he overuses similes, but he will teach you to use imagery so beautifully. And The Narrow Road to the Deep North um, by Richard Flanagan, and it has to be one of my favourites for self-discovery. It is an absolutely, it will, it's harrowing, it will shock you. It's the Burma railway line and the Japanese treatment of the prisoners. But the language that he uses to describe and bring those characters to life will enchant you. And Gail Jones, Five Bells, the opening, that's all you need to read, two pages. Uh, the girl gets off the ferry at Circular Quay and she describes the people around her and the sights that she sees. 
I'm just uh, going to share just one brief moment out of the narrow road to the deep north. And I just want you to listen to something about the language of the children um, as they're running. They would make their way along the old coach road past the coaching hotel the railway had put out of business. Now a dilapidated near ruin in which lived several impoverished families, including the Jackie Maguires. Once every few days, a cloud of dust would announce the coming of a motor car and the kids would appear out of the bush in the coach house and chase the noisy cloud to their lungs where a fire in their legs led. We can see that moment from the way that he describes for us. Chase the noisy cloud to their lungs were a fire and their legs led.